what I've brought for the experiment and uh, related to this topic of equivalent inductance or total inductance th there's one difference still between if you connect resistors in series in a parallel you just have the sum or you have this um, sum of the conductances let's say and for capacitors it's the opposite and inductors still behave or can behave somehow different because what you can have with inductors is you can have for example two coils on one core i will try to show it a little larger in a second but this is um, any idea what, what yeah what this circuit is what this what is the purpose of this printed circuit board yeah it looks like a transformer but it's not maybe i can um show it larger in in the picture Um, so this is this this is this small printed circuit board it looks like this so there is um, yeah there's obviously a coil the yellow thing is could be could be a capacitor um, then the the white thing on the other side this is a fuse then on this side of the capacitor there is some resistor in parallel um, and then we have two other i think this is also i'm not sure um, this could be also capacitors or it could be over voltage protection devices some varistors stuff like this um, yeah so we have we have a coil we have an inductor or to be honest we have two inductors if 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 we are more correct we have a capacitor so what could it be it's it's a filter and it's a filter i removed from a broken microwave oven so this is the input filter, um, like an electromagnetic compatibility EMC filter of a microwave oven. So that disturbances that the microwave oven creates are not split over the mains or are not distributed over the mains power grid. Um, so it's not to protect the microwave oven from disturbances, it, it is to protect the other stuff from disturbances of the microwave oven. And yeah, and, and so there's some inductor on this printed circuit board. And the inductor, as you can see, is quite interesting because there are obviously two coils on the same core. And this is something that you cannot do with resistors or capacitors, but inductors, you can connect inductors in series and in parallel and the flux of the one inductor will go into the other inductor as well because they are wound on the same ring core like 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 this one here right here we also have a ring core but here we have just one coil on this and here we have two coils on the very same core um yeah and so this is how this printed circuit board looks like from the back side. And yeah, so now we can try to think about this uh, for a second. And I will go back to, um, to, to my notepad here, which is there. And maybe use the remaining space and to try to, to, try to draw this a little bit. So, um, first thing that we could do in the experiment is we could try to connect these two resistor uh, these two inductors in series and we can we can measure one inductance at first so let's let's uh, try to have l1 this is what we will measure and we will have l2 so this is l1 and l2 and we will try to measure them separately and 
try to get what is the inductance of each of them. And then we will put them in series and measure total inductance in this case. Um, and, and then hope, hopefully we might see something. Do you have an idea what will happen? What will happen? Okay. We, 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 we will check. So um, let me uh, remove my other experimental equipment here. And so that we have just this, um, just this. And so if I connect, yeah, you would, you would need to have a look. Uh, so this is how it looks from the front side. This is how it looks from the back side. Um, so if I, if I connect my cable between here and there, which are, uh, which is like this cable and this cable, then I just get one of these coils. So uh, I need to rearrange the camera a little bit. There's the display. And if I measure like this, I get one of these coils. And you can see this is quite large. This is four point 4.5 milli Henry and 12 ohm. So let's write this down 4.5 milli Henry. This is the first coil. Okay, so we can do the same, measure the second coil. So now it's connected to the second coil. And as you can see, it's also 4.49 milli Henry, so, some, something quite similar. Uh, so I will also write 4.5 milli Henry. Okay, so now if we would connect them in series, wh what would you expect what we should get as the total um, inductance there? Should be nine milli Henry. Okay, so now to do this series connection, um, what I will do is I will I have I have such a Vago clamp here, and with this Vago clamp I will connect the ends together. and close this. Yeah, so now the ends are firmly connected together and now I can connect this one to the input uh, and this one to the other input. So now I have two, the two inductors in series. And so I might say, okay, we get something like nine, 8.7 something, but it's not milli Henry anymore, it's micro Henry. So instead of getting the expected nine milli Henry, we get 8.7 micro Henry. We get something much, much, much smaller. Why is this? Probably because the coil direction is uh, inverse. Yeah, it's, it's in a way that, um, yeah, so these, the two coils are wound to the same core. And it's in a way that they influence each other, but they influ influence each other in a negative way. You would usually note this by drawing a dot here and a dot over there and saying that the coupling factor between them is, or there is some, some mutual inductance between them that's, that is as large as L1 and L2. So this has some inductance and this has some inductance, but this has also a negative effect on this and this has the same negative effect on this one and so in total they cancel each other. Um, so interestingly because of this mutual inductance because of the coupling between the two coils the total inductance is way 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 smaller than the than the individual inductances. Okay so 
Uh, the second thing that we could do is we could connect these two inductors in parallel. So L1 and L2. And yeah, of course, if they have the same uh, coupling in the series connection, they will also have the same coupling in the parallel connection. So the same M, but now they have the same orientation. Um, yeah, you can think of that. Um, so now I'm measuring at the input. So this is where my instrument is connected now. And this is where my instrument is connected now. If you take a look at the schematic here. And um, this is the point, the, the place where I've clamped them together with this Vago clamp. And so now if I'm looking at the input, if they are connected in parallel from the input to the output, then both of these dots are, are at the beginning. So in the parallel connection, at least if I connect them like this way, they would be, they would be oriented like this. So um, once again, what would you expect as the total inductance in this case? We should, we should get 2.25 millihenry because this is what our formula here said. But the formula does not include the M, does not include the mutual coupling. So yeah, let's, let's try it out. Um, and for this purpose, I've, I've brought some more of these clamps. So I will at first disconnect the instrument and I will remove this clamp here from the end. Um, and so I have another clamp that has three inputs or that can connect three inputs together. So this is what I will use also at the output of the filter and close it. So it's now all firmly connected together and I have one output wire. And the same is what I can do on the other side here. Uh, so open up this, open up this, connect it to uh, the input wires, close it. Okay. And so now I have one input and one output and both wires are, uh, both inductors are now in parallel to each other. So let's connect this to the input. Let's connect this to the output. And what we measure, interestingly, is 4.48 millihenry. So we don't get 2.25. We don't get half of them. We, we get the full value once again. Um, yeah, so we, we, we once again get 4.5 millihenry approximately and yeah so here in this case it's still quite easy to calculate because you get something like that this total inductance is let's say l1 l1 plus l2 and then minus 2 times m and so because the coupling between them is almost as large as the individual inductances, you end up with something like zero. And here the formula is a little more complicated. Um, and it's also a bit more complicated to derive what happens here. But it's at the end, it's something similar. It's like you have, you have half, but then you, you add something at the, again, at the end, or like you, you kind of double it once again because of this uh, mutual inductance between the two. And so this is the interesting thing. And so now we can somehow come back to the purpose of this filter. Um, so let me disconnect the wires once again, because then it's better visible what I'm talking about. So 
so. If we have this filter circuit, um, so now we have what we have measured is if so here yeah, I don't know if it's visible but on this side you can also see there is some label there that says input I think there you can there you can somehow read it that says input so um, I'm not sure what the input and output side is of input means it's a microwave oven um, yeah, I, I think no, I think this is where your cable would be connected, your, your mains outlet cable. Um, and this is what's going to the microwave oven. But what we have measured is if you have a current, yeah, if you are measuring the inductance, if you have a current that goes this way and then returns on the other wires here in the opposite way outside, uh, what was the total inductance then? If the, if the inductors were in, in series, it was very small, it was zero. So for a current that we would call differential mode current, current that goes in the one direction on the one wire and returns in the other direction on the other wire, uh, the total inductance is very small. So there is almost no filtering effect. This differential mode current, which is the useful current, would, would just go through. But if this would be connected together and if this would be connected together or if we would have a current that is going in the same direction or on both of our wires then we would get a rather large inductance so in this case the filter would be effective and it would filter and this is also the purpose of this um, circuit and this filter to filter these currents that go on the same direction on both wires and this is what we would call a common mode current. Um, and so this coil, this choke is also called a common mode choke because it will be effective for these common mode currents. Or a current compensated choke because it will compensate for the usual current, for the differential mode current that you would like to have to operate your circuit but it will block this common mode current. And this is yeah something that you will find in in many devices that produce disturbances. Yeah, and this is what we will what what we deal with in our research. What is called electromagnetic compatibility. Um, yeah, but at the end, it's just an inductor, and you just calculate uh, equivalent inductance, total inductance like for resistors, like for capacitors, but just that for inductors you have these special effects that um, there is this mutual, right, there is this mutual inductance that you don't have for resistors or for capacitors.